We are live! Live from Shot Show, the pinnacle of the gun world. We're with Apex Optics, Chris. Yes. Yes. Let's keep it classy. <laughs> I haven't told any fart jokes yet. No, that's true. That was earlier. Uh, we uh we normally would play the intro right about now, but the uh, camera's way over there, so we're not going to do that tonight. Also, it's not Friday, so there's that. But we are here from Shot Show with Mr. Van Der Katolica, who I just sprayed water all over with my... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's been a long day. How's it been for honestly, you? Honestly, it feels like Friday. Yeah. Already. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I, we've been here a couple of times back and forth throughout the day, and you guys have been nonstop the entire time. It's, it's It has definitely felt like that. Yeah. Since probably like 8 to 10, I don't even know how many people we talked to. It was, I don't know, probably in the thousands. But in oh, this matter of two hours, we're like, we figure the more people you speak to, the faster it would go and right. feel. It does not. For whatever <laughs> reason, man. Well, there's a good reason for it because currently Apex Optics has one SKU on the market. And before the end of this year, we figured it out earlier with Carly, we're taking some liberties. But with those liberties, Apex Optics will have nine SKUs on the market. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. So right now there's the Apex Rival. Yes. And now we're about to blow everybody's minds. There are three models of the Summit Binocular. Yes. So that's four. Mm -hmm. There's the Edge LPVO 1 to 10, which we're going to talk about. Yep. There's the Hunter 3 to 15, which we're going to talk about. Yep. There's, oh, there might even be more than nine SKUs. There's the uh, bin uh, the Bino adapter mm -hmm. for bipod. Yeah. Tripod. The tripod. Yeah. Fuck bipods. <laughs> uh, there's the, <laughs> there's the, um, the bino harness, harness yep. which comes with the binos, but like it's its own skew, we can call yeah. it that. Yeah. So that's eight. What did we figure out? Number nine was oh, oh there's two models of the hunter illuminated right. and non illuminated. That's right. so, that's two skews. so that's nine. number nine. Nine, I didn't even think of it, I didn't think to count it. Yeah, that's right. So, honestly, so, so funny story, you guys know what our situation was last year 12 calendar months from. Right, today. Yeah, yeah. In the past. You didn't have your own booth. You you relied on the kindness of KDEX and MDT which to showcase your scopes. Which we are forever thankful for. Absolutely. Yeah. And you were basically just running around trying to get attention and get meetings. You know what? I think we did some like questionably illegal things at SHOT Show last year, which I will not talk about, but that, that got us... I uh, believe you just did. Yeah, they, <laughs> I did not admit to anything. Play the fifth. But okay. Policy <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's not technically illegal. It's like right. in violation of best practices, right. but um, but they're not the best practices anyway. No. That's why you violated them, right? And we've actually seen other allegedly. I, we've seen other oh. vendors do the exact same thing that we were doing last year. So I was like, I, I respect the game. I was yeah. talking to somebody earlier today, and they were like, "Well, why do so many people do this?" Because they were aware of like at least three other people that are doing that this year. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, it was it was a really interesting way to do it last year, right? And we talk about how far we've come and all that. We joke internally about that. But yeah. in reality, like quite seriously, this company has grown exponentially in 12 months. It's and stupid. It, it's, yeah. And it's, it's a little mind numbing sometimes just to even think about. Like we didn't even have a product last year when we came to shop. Yeah. We had early pre-production models. You had we, to put an early MOA model on one of the rifles in uh, MDT. <laughs> yes. Oh, the good old days. Yes. Yeah. No more. <laughs> and then, uh, and uh, so, you know, that's the thing. So we had a couple of rifle scopes at MDT and, and KDAX, again, which we were super thankful for. Yep. And those guys are, again, displaying our products. This time, many, many more of them, which we're, again, we're super thankful and we'd love to work with those guys. Both yep. of them. Um, and then from that point to now, we're talking about nine SKUs in 2023. We have our own relatively good-sized booth in one of the premier spots in the shot yep. show, which we completely locked out on. Again, like this is just one of those things where, you know, sometimes you get stupid, sometimes you get lucky, a little bit both, sometimes, I don't know. But in reality, we've come a long way in 12 months, and we they feel like 2023 is going to be an even bigger year for us than that. So hey, we're very yeah. excited about it. Even garbage goals go on the board. You know, right? it's all it's the wins that matter. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't care how you win. How you get there. Yeah. If you don't do this, they can't hear you. Right. No, it has to be that. Yeah, it has, yeah. All right. <laughs> He's saying garbage goals count too. I don't even know what a garbage goal is. Oh, man. 
hockey. It's alright. You never, yeah. you never played hockey. So. Yeah. Oh, oh, non-Canadian. Yeah. It's a hockey reference. <laughs> I've had plenty of garbage goals scored on me, so I know the reference. <laughs> quite well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, so, let's let's yeah. talk about some of those skews. So yeah. people will know we've already like we talked about this at Tacom. Uh, you want do you want to be our our, yeah. our monkey? Cue card guy. There we go. Awesome. So the Summit series, there's three different models. You got a 10 power, a 12 power, and a 12 power with a reticle. Yep. And that is supposed to be hitting the market March, April. March or April. Shipping delays. Actually, they hit the boat yesterday. So knowing what I have experienced and what I, and the stories I've heard from you before, hope for April. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad if they show up at the beginning of May. That's right. Yeah. Just be, be understanding, but hopefully April. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I, we're, we're pretty confident. I think a lot of the shipping things have calmed down and have resolved themselves. Thankfully. Yeah. Uh, the world has, I think learned that you cannot rely on one mechanism for getting goods to market so a lot of companies have shifted you know delivery approaches and whatever else and shipping methods so yeah, yeah we i think it, i think we're, we'll be okay that's yeah. good that's yeah. good so then the second one and, and we'll talk about these each at a time i like how you did that by the way Thank i'm you. gonna get uh, i'm gonna get our our resident german uh card holder to show that one this is super exciting oh yeah you want to grab it which one is it that, that one. one. Yep. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. All in. Perfect. <laughs> you guys play with it. This is the Apex Edge LPVO 1 to 10 with locking turrets, zero stop, illuminated reticle, your classic burnt orange. Can we call it classic at this point? It, it's legendary. It's the legendary burnt orange throw lever with the uh, orange ring at the front. Um, first focal plane uh radical yep and do you want to show up the back of that card so that everybody can see <laughs> oh you put it on the ground what the radical looks like <laughs> like oh he does that get it oh, there uh, so there you guys can see that like uh fully zoomed out fully zoomed in and halfway in between is it five power that it's it's showing here? At, at around five power, I think about four point seven ish. It starts to really disappear, and about five, it's fully gone. And that's what's so cool is that is um, when it's fully zoomed out. What is that like an eight MOA or a twelve MOA or a ten MOA? I think it's like. Wait five. a minute, it's not an MOA. No, scope. It's, it's like twelve mil or something. Like twelve mil. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll have to look at the math, but it, it's it's large. It's basically for quick acquisition. Quick acquisition centers your eye on the target, and this is kind of the optical center of the optic. And then it's, uh, there's that inside inner dot as well that's illuminated along with the other dot. So you have those two points of reference that really drive you in. So, yeah, uh, being really expressive. Um, so, yeah, as, as you do that and then as you zoom in, that outer segmented ring system that's illuminated, you can choose to have it on or off, obviously, with the illumination. Right. But it's daylight bright. You can basically both eyes open. Uh, certified True 1X optical system. So it's a, yeah. third, a third party... Uh, actually, a, a lab took it to their machines and certified that it's a one X optical. Really? Yep. No. For, so it's like getting a gluten free certification. Yeah, I mean, we we just made our own lab and just slapped that certification <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the shell companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Apex, that's really cool. Apex testing LLC. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it is. It's, so it's it's ideal for you know two both eyes open style shooting. Um, you can as you zoom in, you know the inner red dot is still available to you. It's an inner segmented dot along with an inner center dot. So it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And then um, a, a modified Christmas tree also shows up in there at like eight or nine, 10 X. Yeah. So any longer distance pokes that you want to do with whatever platform you're shooting, it, it's ideal for that. So lever actions. Yep. Bolt guns. Yep. Straight pulls. Semi-autos. Uh, Semi-autos. Because they're not going away. I, no. Never, ever, ever. We're holding out hope. Yeah. They're not gone until they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, semi-autos, carbines, uh, yep. pretty much anything you can think of. Guys are putting on, like, planning on putting on 45, 70s, 30, 30s, like, all sorts of bush guns, anything you can think of. The, so, the, those modernized lever actions that are so popular right tactical, now. Right, yeah. yeah. For tactical sure. lever guns. Yep. That's, that sure. that's a bad uh, name, I'll though. Good job here. <laughs> <laughs> tactical lever gun is not a good name. We got to <laughs> figure out a new name for that. But, yeah, awesome. So, 
Um, we're, we're missing some features on that. I, I know we are. Yeah, so 40 mils of internal adjustment. Right. Overall. So you got a lot of dial capacity. That's a lot. And it took us yeah. about six months to engineer the zero stop system. So on the elevation. So it's, okay. it's, it's good. It's, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, the locking turrets are, is it, is it, it's pop up to yeah. dial. Pop up to dial yeah, and pop down to lock. Pop down to lock. Yeah. 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 I saw another brand which shall remain nameless. Uh, <laughs> today I was looking at their LPVO and it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, you're going to bump that all the time and you're going to unlock the turret accidentally. Yeah. I, I think it just comes down to like, what's the most common use case that you're thinking? Yeah. And then evaluate all the pros and cons of that use case and try to make something that'll work for that and then try to think of secondary search or whatever yeah and then but you know okay well don't do the opposite of what makes sense for your primary right yeah exactly so, yeah. don't that's a good that's a good rule for life don't do the opposite of what makes sense yeah we try to live <laughs> our lives that way yeah, i love it yeah. <laughs> so uh how, what do you know what's the weight on the edge uh i do i think the edge is going to be about 24 ounces 24 ounces okay yeah. Yeah. how many ounces in a pound Say again. How many ounces uh, 16. are in a pound? <laughs> 16 ounces in a pound? So it's about one and a half pounds. Half -ish, yeah. yeah. It might That's be a little awesome. bit lighter than that, actually, because I think I might be confusing with the uh, with the Hunter. Spec sheet. I have a spec sheet that I made up that has all the things. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was Thank you. Yeah. No, no, no. You're not the, being I've, too I've thrown around so many numbers this week. 600 grams, 21 ounces. Sorry, 21 ounces. That's what he said, isn't it? I think I said 23 or 24. Oh, it's uh, yeah, 24. So yeah, the, the Hunter... So it's less than a pound and a half. Yes. Okay. So the Hunter is going to be 24, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, that's what that was, was a pound and a half. Yeah. Which is, like, that's damn good for a hunting rifle, pound and a half. That's pretty good. Yeah, especially with the features that are crammed into it as well. So let's talk about that right now. Let's do it. Uh, where's the card for that one? There we go. Oh, he's already got it in his hands, oh, man. Right. What a good card guy. Yeah. All right, show them the card. Okay. This excites me. I like this one. Actually... I was more excited for the Hunter before yeah. I saw these, yeah. but now I'm really excited for that Edge. Perfect. That thing's badass. Yeah. I we have a lot. Ha we have had, I mean, America is, you know, the, the perfect market for something like that. Yeah. But we had a lot of people come through and they're like, I cannot wait for you to start shipping these because I won't. And really? So, yeah. It's literally been like, I, I don't know if I'm going to order enough for the pack in the first run. So. Uh oh. And it's good. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> so you might have problem, to wait yeah. half a year for it. But yeah. That's okay. I can wait. I'm a patient guy. No, not you. I mean, them. You can have the first one. Oh, fuck you guys then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I matter. See, Mom, yeah. I told you so, I would amount to something. So what you're seeing there is a 3 to 15 by 44 objective lens with yep. a 30 millimeter tube. Uh, so that's our hunting model. First focal plane as well. Mill, mill, turrets, and reticle. Again, pop up. It's the same locking system same, on both. Oh, same the locking, okay, 100%, yeah. same yeah. locking system as on the edge. Same super... We should, like, here, dial that again. And it's, like, it's as tactile as it is loud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. And then the uh, the windage is the same. It pops out to dial it or just leave, leave it locked in. Yeah. Uh, 3 to 15 range on the zoom lever. Honestly, it's the same setup as the rival where it's in the oversized zoom yep. lever. You can take out the, the lever itself where you can put the plug in, whatever you decide to do. Um, it's, it's a more or less a modified version of the CLR reticle kind of tailor made for a hunting scenario. So the, the center dot is a lot bigger. Okay. It's, it's still a floating dot. Um, yep. Thank you. Um, more or less still gives you that Christmas tree that you're looking for. Still gives you the center floating dots on the vertical elevation, Yeah. but it, uh, it's just simplified. It doesn't have the side ranging marks or anything like that. Um, really made for quick engagements. I went, I tested this out all, all over from November through December hunting and uh, had good success with it on my on my elk hunt where I, uh, where I was successful at about 400 yards of the scope in my yeah. seven saw EM rifle. So, yeah. And it has, a, a, unlike the rival, it has a drop, what's it called, Kurt? A drop thingy? All oh, good in the vertical stadium. Four, four, that's it. Four mils of vertical stadia for hold under. For hold under, is that well? That was simple. It kind so of is, yeah. the rival has no hold under because it's not necessary. Well, it has well, I think it has one mil or two mils. I can't I remember. I don't know. Well, you yeah. made it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I get somewhere around here. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's uh. It's oh, we put it under one or two mils, but oh. I think we doubled it on the. That's it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's one one mil. mil. One mil. Yeah. So you got four mil on the hunter. On the hunter, yeah. So the, the the purpose of that one really the feedback like our first version didn't have that of the prototypes. Okay. Uh, we initially had like one mil or two mil, basically similar concept as the rival. Yeah. And then the feedback that we received from some of our friends that are guides and outfitters and, and really experienced hunters and they hunt with a lot of clients from all over the place that are of varying different skill levels is that a lot of these guys like a traditional duplex style radical, but they also really like the open tops they could see and, and, and kind of look through their scope. And the field of view still matters. Yeah, the field of view still matters. So we kind of, this was a happy compromise. And yeah, I was really I happy with so. the way it turned out. Yeah, I think I think I think I've been saying this since the beginning. I like I'm I'm not an expert on scopes by any stretch, but I really like your guys' reticles. Thank you. I, I, there's I own so many scopes, and some of them are like higher end scopes, mm -hmm. and the reticles are just busy. And and I think one thing that you guys have always done really well is like less is more. Yeah. So with that, um, your uh, objective diameter on this one. Mm -hmm. Tell us why you went that way rather than go to what so many other companies are doing, sticking with the 50 or larger, mm -hmm. uh, even on hunting scopes. Yeah, you know what? It, it came down to it came down to hitting a certain segment of the market that I think is a little bit underserved, which is the lighter weight hunting scopes. Uh, that you know, I'm I'm a backcountry hunter through and through. I yeah. when I started hunting, I started hunting in the Rockies. Through the Porcupine Hills and in and, and Crownland all around Calgary and, and you know three or four hours around there. And that's tough slogging through the mountains. Every gram counts. I remember going through like Harley made fun of me because I had like spreadsheets upon spreadsheets and notes of, and I would weigh every single piece of my gear because I was going on a three or four day hunt right. and I'm carrying my food, my water, my water purification, my sleeping system, everything right. along with my rifle right. and my, my ammo and everything else. So everything mattered. So the compromise there is optical quality, light gathering, yes. weight. I to get into that. Yeah, so it's still an ED glass apochromatic. So it's a triple lens, high density glass system okay. in the front. All that carries through the 13 other lenses, or sorry, 11 other lenses that are in here. Right. So as you make this bigger, the weight astronomically sure. increases. So sure. it's, the trade off is we wouldn't be able to make a 24 ounce scope, it's probably closer to 28 or 29. Right. And then you start getting into that, well, what's the difference between that and the rival territory of 37? Right. Yeah. So we may, might as well just take a higher power scope. So it, right. it has been uh, sort of disproven too, like the, 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 the selling fe feature <laughs> that, that uh, a lot of scope companies use was the bigger lens, more light gathering. And to a, to a degree, that has been disproven, right? It's lens quality that affects that more than actual lens. Yeah, 100%. So that's what I was going to say next is that we actually talked to our engineers quite a bit about that. And we had that debate internally for seemingly like three months. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So basically it came down to what do we want to do? What's the objective here? And then we started doing testing between 44 and 50 millimeters. I kept... I actually kept telling them I wanted a 50 millimeter objective oh, lens. So I was okay. on that train where I was like, right. and I got proven wrong okay. and I'm totally okay to admit that. Um, what they told me was that for, from a light gathering and optical transmission perspective, it's the coatings that matter more along with the higher quality of the glass system, sure. like you were saying. Right. So when it comes down to the ED glass, the APO lens system, and then the seven layer coating system, mm -hmm. I'm actually seeing better light transmission through that than Sorry. I am through a 50 millimeter yeah. objective lens through some lower quality optical systems. There you go. So I am yeah. perfectly, I had this thing in like low light, first light, right. anything in between nighttime. Right. It, it's so you, you nice know, level. you're going to get those questions because there was, there 100%. was that, that, that marketing thing out there for the bigger objective lens. And if you're going for a hunting scope, well, you want all the light gathering you can get. There's your explanation folks. Yeah. And I mean, sure. I, uh, it, it it, it does maybe make a little bit of a difference, but we're talking like less than 1%. Right. Exactly. If you're comparing yeah. apples to apples. Right. You bet. Yeah. So about a minute and a half in real world light conditions. Yeah, that, maybe 30 <laughs> seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> right. That sun's going down. Yeah. Boy. And if you're at that, <laughs> if you're in that spot on the last day of the season with right. the tag still in your pocket, then I don't think <laughs> it's the scope's fault. Reassess. So, yeah. <laughs> something. Yeah. It's, it's usually my fault. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we we, uh, we need to talk about some logistics here. So yeah. we know we we know the Summit series. Mm -hmm. 
That sounds like a great competition. By the 1972. Way. I think it's been done. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hockey again? Yeah, hockey again. Yeah. Why do you think we call it a summit? I have such great ideas. And these <laughs> hockey people have ruined everything. Yeah. Anyway, so that's uh, like like next couple of months, let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, not, that's not actually accurate. It's not the next couple of months. Within like three, four months, give or take. Okay. Um, you already have uh, MSRP announced for those. Mm-hmm. Run us through them again. So we're going to start at 650 for the 10 by 42 Summit EDs. Um, we're st- go to 750 for the 12 powers. It's only $100 more to upgrade the bigger objective lens, 12 by 50, um, 12 power magnification, like I said. And then the reticle Summit Pros, which are based on that 12 by 50 optical system, uh, are going to be 950 CAD. 950 CAD. Yeah. Canadian dollars. Dollars. Perfect. Okay. When are we expecting the edge to hit the market? Well, the edge is more than likely going to be in the May, June timeframe. Same okay. with the Hunter. So the Hunter and the edge will be coming to the, being ready to ship around the same time. Oh, okay. So there's not going to be a, a, like a much of a delay between the two of them. No. Okay. No, they're in the same production run. So. Do we have uh, an expected MSRP for the edge of the Hunter? We do. So, we're targeting, this might change a little bit depending on how things go, but I think yeah. we're targeting for the Hunter $1,400 Canadian. Nice. That's for the both illuminated and non-illuminated. We want right. the price point to be the same. It's just a preference Oh, choice. really? Yeah. 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 So there's trade-offs. Yeah. Um, well, let me, uh, we, we, did, we glossed over that. What is the weight no, no, difference no. between the illuminated yeah. and the non-illuminated? It's about two ounces. Well, two ounces. Yeah. Okay. So if you want a, a, maybe a little bit of a slimmer profile, a yep. yep, couple right. ounces less weight, same price. Yeah, you just you, lose the illuminated. You can get the non-illuminated. Okay. Yeah. And then, no, it's okay. We're not live. You're not bothering us. Not yeah, oh, come on okay. in. Come on in, Shane. Come here. <laughs> and, and then, why is he tapping my belly? <laughs> and then uh, the edge, what's the MSRP going to be on that? MSRP on the edge is going to be, I mean, I have my notes. Where'd it go? 1800 the end. 1800 for the LPVO. Yep. 1400 for the Hunter. Yep. Both coming out this summer. This summer. Available this summer. Shipping. I don't know what to tell you. you know, cool. Man. Good job. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. It's like the tip of the spear. That's right. The top of the mountain. The, the summit. The, if you were. Yes, the summit. <laughs> we're peering over the edge. I can't fit hunting in there with the folks. We're having some technical difficulties. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't fall off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't care over the edge. That, that won't happen. <laughs> that won't happen. Okay. So, like, where, like, what's, what are you doing from here? Like, what's next? Oh, I you guys, you guys, are, you guys are off the air, but I can't talk about it just yet. But you're not done, is the point. No, we're never done. Yeah. Honestly, the moment anything hits the production in the factory, I'm move on to the next project. Yeah. It's out of our hands, out of the factory's hands. They do all the QAQC production, ship it over to us, and then we're already in the production, the engineering cycle for the next things. Wow. So we have some cool, interesting meetings over here, actually, with some of our suppliers that we've been meeting to meet in person. So they're going to be coming by the booth, and we're starting the engineering work on some really cool stuff. Um, and then, yeah, things that we're actually having a patent now because we're yeah. innovating so much, and we're, we're, ideas are pouring out of every corner of our shooting team, of, uh, of customers, like, hey, you guys thought about this? I'm like, I have thought about it. I want to make it. Now we have to secure the intellectual property. And, like, how do we make sure that nobody else comes out with this for us? Do you need us to take care of any corporate I mean, spies for you? A or? roundhouse kick to the face would be awesome. You yeah. point, point the foot. That guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> that, that's a woman. <laughs> uh, the guy that she's with. <laughs> oh, okay, the guy she's with. Okay. He doesn't look right. Okay. <laughs> he just looks shady. Yeah. We'll just uh, we'll just break some knees and stuff. But yeah, we're yeah. all fat, Tony. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we're uh, we're definitely looking to come out with some innovative stuff that yeah. uh, that's going to change change a lot of interesting aspects of either competitive shooting or um, especially different. I guess I will call it different disciplines of competitive shooting. Very cool. I love it. Have we got any questions popped up there, Yenzi? Nobody wants. We we covered it so thoroughly. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, what other questions can there be? Colors. Any other colors planned? Oh, it's all just comments of support? 
Well, thank you. So, yeah. Yeah, that's all I like that. That looks good. Okay. As far as colors, no, we're not doing any other colors really, but um, all the information for all these are going to be in the website in the next couple of weeks. So oh, okay. we're going to open up all the info and then we may or may not do a pre-order on something, but we're not sure yet. We'll see. I'm not sure if I want to roll those dice again, but uh, we'll see. Did, did that was like, obviously that was uh, a trying time when you guys first opened the rival the the right when you were supposed to be having it shipped was when all those shipping issues around the world started happening. Yeah, and COVID factory shutdowns and downstream supplier shutdowns, and it was it was just a bad mix of things. I can understand I the two once bitten that. twice shy idea. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, we we're also wanting to make sure that our customers have access to the stuff before it hits kind of the general markets. So people who are on our mailing list, people who follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and all the other socials, those are the people that we want to have access to the stuff. So we're thinking about doing like a limited customer only. Hey, if you own a rival, you're open up as an exclusive pre-sale kind of thing. So that's oh, kind yeah, of what okay. we're thinking of doing. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice little uh, idea for the people that got rivals. Well, people who supported us early on. So I think yeah. we want to we do something for them. So yeah, yeah that's neat. So I like that idea. Have we covered the what? The no. milling of the vinyl. Yeah. The, we talked about the, the reticle, reticle binos. Yeah. 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 So we could talk about those a little bit. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked about it at TACOM as well, but let's talk about it again. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So I think the, the, the reticle is in the back of that card. Okay. But it's a 20 by 20. Here you yes. go, Yenzi. So it's a 20 by 20 inside. mil reticle, kind of like, I guess, open square or L shape uh, with a floating dot in the corner with uh, 0 0.2 mil segments on the soft engines so a lot of the past competitors that we've had yep yeah. all the past competitors that we've had were 10 powers and they had half 0 0.5 mil sub tensions so you weren't able to really like get a finer detail right. or finer reading on a target or how much you're missing by so you're racking a little bit wider I mean, shane shane do you want a box to stand on <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he came in here and tapped my belly, so I had to talk shit about him off camera. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, carry on. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's we're really excited about these ones. We have had a ton of demand yeah. both across the pond uh, in the U.S. and Canada for any competitive shooter that's ever shot any competitive PRS match. So, like, I want them right now. Yeah. When, when can I buy them? Yeah. April May. April May. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, let's. Um, uh, we were just a minute ago. We were talking about. Um, oh man, I had it. I had an idea, and then Shane distracted me. What? Shane, come over here. He probably wants the uh, radical in the binoculars in MOA. Is he, is he allowed to talk about uh, the scope that he has? Sure. The EM special edition the version. The Shane yeah. Monster special yeah. edition. Hold that up to your face. Oh Jesus. Okay. So let's talk about how that thing came out to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, but so literally, like, we had one of our pre-production yep. early demos was a three twenty-four, and Shane had seen it because Mikey had it, and uh, I think you're like, you need to make me one of these with a the CLR reticle. You need to make a rival in a three twenty-four. I was like, well, I don't know. Like, we already have the four thirty-two. That's a pretty good range that covers off most people, and it's kind of in that optical, you know, optimal range where you're kind of in the middle of the optical system if you don't want to dial too much. So, yeah, and then Shane's like, but I really want a 3 to 24. I'll, I'll be honest, with all the shooting I do, I've had a lot of trouble, anything over 25. Like, yeah. I've had the Mark V, 35. I've shot the attacker. I've got a 60-power Genesis. The high mag is just a struggle for me. And shooting PRS, I mean, we're running 16, 18 power all the time, Max. right? Yeah. So I, I just felt more comfortable with a little less magnification in my optic. And I'm looking forward to getting on a rifle and testing it. Yeah. Through spaces and see. I mean, everything else is insane. But you know what? And that's the thing. Like we did basically the, the survival four to thirty two with just a smaller optical, like a smaller mag range. Uh, I think it's maybe like a half inch shorter. I, I think Mike, like I haven't directly compared it to carries yeah. yet, but I think he said it was about a half inch or three quarters of an inch shorter on the housing. Yeah, but it feels the same. same. Objective lens. Yeah, same, yeah. Same 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 fifty six, thirty four millimeter. The eye box feels real similar. Like, yeah. yeah I mean, other than it saying pre production, not for sale at the bottom of it, it's perfect. <laughs> Well, yeah, we, I'll buy it back from you if you ever want. Well, yeah. you know what? Nobody sees the bottom of my scope anyway. Exactly. 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 I'm not so if, if, if that tests well and there's a demand for that, is that something you guys would consider? I mean, I would love for people to tell me if they want something like that because I know, like, Shane, we, we've had lots of conversations about this. 
Uh, and then I've heard, I've actually sussed this out to a bunch of people and said, Hey, what do you think of a three to 24? Like kind of just like slowly pull people that we know are in the industry. And like, and then a lot of people have the exact same reactions. Like, yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be perfect. And well, I'm I'm like, seeing, but would you buy one? Yeah. I'm people. seeing more trending know, would, of yeah. people, uh, like you, even the, the new vortex, what, what is it? A 36, um, the razors, the 35, the 36. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of guys jumped on them right away. And there was a lot of sponsorships handed out. A lot of those are all going back and guys are jumping back into the 25. Like, I mean, obviously the five to 25 is probably the most common, right? Yeah. The six to 24. If you go back to the old four times directors right. and they did really well for a long time. Have you ever shot anything over 25? Excluding the Genesis? Well, excluding the Genesis. No. Tested a gen three, uh, vortex. Razor and such a fucking disappointment. I mean, sorry, <laughs> I didn't say that. Vortex not looking for sponsorship. Hey, all you asked me about was magnification. <laughs> say nothing else. You know, I finally had to filth my hands by mounting a couple of those onto rifles, <laughs> and I was really disappointed. The turrets, the yeah. pop turret, like it was so heavy. I, I was so anyway, uh, magnification. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, we're we're open to making a three to twenty four for sure if there's a demand there. Yeah, I and then we have it. another. Can you call it the Shane if you do ever? <laughs> we'll, we'll call the 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 rival EM. Oh, that sounds much better, but I like the Shane. Yeah, the Shane. That's <laughs> right. You want to share? <laughs> Dan, you want to share yours with Dan? With Dan? A lot of shipping back and forth. Yeah. I don't know. Is any one of those rimfire? Like yes. I don't know if I could trust those rimfire guys. <laughs> you should. Right? <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Yeah. They'll stab you in the back as soon as you build the gun. Okay. Okay. So, are you done with me? You got, oh, you want to oh, go? I don't know. Oh, you you guys leave now? I'm just not very focused. Would you like to pat my belly again? I, I enjoyed <laughs> it. <laughs> Get out of here! You bother me. We're getting out of here because the crowd leaves. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so man, like, no yeah, shortage. We're always, we're always doing stuff. Yeah, we're always playing around with things, and, and every time we get, you know, product that samples made, I always like throw a couple of a uh, couple of extra requests in with the factory. Um, you know, I have, like for this one, for example, I uh, and I'll show you a picture. Why did it feel to me like you were pulling a gun out here? Because <laughs> we're in America. <laughs> um. I want people to. We're gonna put this on our social, so we'll share with this within the next couple of days. Okay. But can I, I give you know, it? Can you can you guess what that is that we're trying to make? It, it's a tandem bicycle in optics form. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna describe it to our listeners. It it's it's an optic, but think of what an optic would look like if it were a tandem bicycle. I would say a clown car of an optic for sure. A clown yeah. car, yeah, that works too. Yeah. Would you take a gander? That to me looks like you're attempting something normally achievable. With that's a, a prism. Salvador. With a prism, yeah. That's a Salvador Dolly optical. That's a TPN <laughs> We're not showing them. They, no, no, no. they no, only no. get the descriptions. Right. Yeah. You know what that yeah. is? Like, that, what? that long barrel that MDT did, that testing? Mm -hmm. That's a scope to match. It is. Well, I was inspired, inspired by Ryan McClain. So, yeah. <laughs> I had to one up him somehow. <laughs> So, so what yeah. more are we saying about that thing? Nothing. Literally, literally we're, nothing. We're literally going to put a poll out on Instagram okay. and Facebook and see if people have any ideas what that is. Are you? Uh, and then are you going to announce this on April 1st? Yes. That's a great idea. <laughs> it's a scopopede. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a what? It's, it's, a, it's a scopopede. <laughs> That's an amazing description. Mm -hmm. there, was, uh, there was some sort of pop-up... Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, a, a yeah. pop-up turn indicator. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. So it's it's kind of like look a at rival. me knowing things. It's kind of like an arrival, but I asked them to color it. So to like orange, it, you yeah, mean? it's gonna be orange. Okay. On a, another, this another. is an actual thing. Yeah. Hashtag scopapede. Scopapede. <laughs> scopapede. Or maybe maybe that's just the project name now. It's Project Scopapede now, because you know you have to have a mysterious right. name for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been busy. There's always side projects happening, and, and we'll see a negative and actually materialize, materialize in any kind of commercial form, but we're okay. always playing around with stuff. We're trying to innovate. <laughs> and uh, thank you for walking. Have a good day, sir. Guy. <laughs> Tony. Random dude that I've never seen in my life. Okay. Like, how, do you, how do you not notice This is not a camera. public space. Anyway, yeah. um, invitation only. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. So, we're always doing that, and then we are also got another project on the go, like I mentioned, that I can't quite talk about yet, but maybe in 
six or eight months or whenever we do another. Well, I mean, we, we always have to have more content to bring you on back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So That's don't stop innovating. So that I could talk about it on your show. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for you guys. I, I, and it always has something to do with us. Yeah. 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 I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. Sure. Do we have any more questions, Jens, or are we going to be done here? Are we going to wrap this up? All right. Vanya, we've taken a lot of your time. There's been a lot of people in and out of here. I'm sure we've lost you at least $15,000 worth of sales. So thank you for sitting with us. Don't admit to that. <laughs> you know that will only come back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Notice. We, for all our listeners, there will likely not be a live show this Friday. That's why we're going live today. Correct. And likely not live in this format for the rest of the week. Although you can probably expect us to see us doing some like, uh, you know, maybe some live shorts Facebook and, stuff and yeah. shorts and, yeah, and that sort of thing. And then a lot of our uh, shot coverage in general will be popping up on the YouTube page. Hopefully starting this week, if I ever get any time to sit in our hotel room yeah, and edit. That'll dictate, right? Yeah, I would like to get something out tonight, but we'll see if that happens. Um, but uh, over the next week, for sure. Uh, so from SHOT Show, I'm Chris. I'm Kurt. And that's Vanya. <laughs> from Apex. We haven't done that in too long, so I, I had to do it. From Apex Optics, we'll see you guys later. Sayonara. Hit, hit the button, Jens.